Hi, good evening to everyone. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and I am here to take you through what appears to be a recent change in employer stance around COVID-19 vaccinations. And this is with a big uh, health provider in the United States. So that's quite significant. It all came about because I'd recently seen on LinkedIn a very in interesting post and this is where uh, it is here. In this post here, somebody who got a letter from Kaiser Permanente uh, with regards to the change in vaccine status. And I'll be going through that in just a few minutes. But before that, please remember if you're watching on YouTube to remember to click on the link in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe. Otherwise, please remember to look at the descriptions in terms of the um the the video where you will find other links to other very important things we're doing like a search database for all our videos and access to the courses so please join us in this research journey but getting back to the main issue here these vaccine mandates well who really is kaiser permanent permanente and i hope i've gotten that pronounced correctly so i've gone and taken a look at what it is that they do and you can see here that they are their history is that they are a groundbreaking integrated care model evolving through many decades and critically uh, they have lots of visions and missions about high quality affordable healthcare services, and this is throughout the United States. So this is a large company, and the one that really works in the industry of healthcare. So what exactly happened with regards to vaccine mandates? That's part of the question. And if we look back in history, we will find uh, that they also had their vaccine mandates in place. And you can see this was from 2021, August 2nd. They mandated COVID vaccination for all their employees and physicians amid a resurging pandemic. And so what it would have meant is that if you were not vaccinated, you wouldn't have been able to keep your job. And this is a critical part of the problem because many people lost their jobs because they didn't get the COVID vaccine. So what is this update about? So I've gotten this letter that I thought I'd take a look at to try and see if I can understand a little bit more. So here is what it looks like. So this letter was seems as though it was sent out to an employee and you can see it here. And as we zoom in on it, we can see this was May 17th, 2024, that this was sent. And uh, their name has been taken out. And so what they were saying is that we're writing to let you know there's been a change in the Kaiser Permanente COVID-19 vaccination for KP workforce members policy, the vaccine policy. And so they recognized that they were trying to protect the health and safety of all their members, many of whom were high risk. And in 2021, they impl implemented their vaccine policy. And it required as a condition of employ employment that employees must submit proof that they were fully vaccinated or a specific exemption. And that's essentially what it was that many companies did across the United States and Europe in many first world countries. What is very sad is that it seems they didn't grasp the way how the virus causes problems, who is at risk and why they're at risk. What was the purpose of vaccination? Because it should have been clear to all those people that the purpose of vaccination, the reason that they did or what they focused their research on was trying to prevent severe disease, not about transmission. Now, a lot of people use the information about transmission to try and bring in mandates, but that was not really what the research that was done by many of the pharmaceutical companies was about. And so it's important for us to understand that critical point with regards to how things actually work. So let's get back to the point in hand. When you look in more detail at what they're saying here now, 
is that they have recognized that due to changes in the federal, state, and local vaccine requirements, they have revised their policy from February 1st, 2024. And suddenly now, vaccination against COVID-19 is no longer required as a condition of employment. Now, they clearly point out here that they understand that your employment may have been ended. So again, this is pointing to somebody. So they've sent this letter to a prior employee who lost their job because of uh, COVID vaccination. And they are offering them the opportunity to come back and work with them. Is that really what it's about? Or are they covering for the fact that they may become legally liable because they had taken away someone's livelihood based on the science that was not fully understood? Now, they may argue that this is what they were told from the CDC. That's understandable. However, they still did the action. And so, therefore, they are still responsible for firing the person because the CDC didn't tell them specifically to do that. So this may be part of that position that the company is trying to do. How do we get around this problem? So let's go back here. And they wanted to point out that given the revision of the vaccine policy, we wanted to inform you that you are eligible for rehire with Kaiser Permanente for open and available positions for which you are qualified to reapply. It's quite likely that if they reapply, they may have to sign some kind of agreement that they are not going to try and take the company to court. That's quite possible. We don't know. But it is raising the issues that many employers are having because of what they did with regards to vaccine mandates. The reality is, how did they get this so wrong? What is it that they missed that was so important? So I then went back to look at what was it that changed with regards to the CDC policy that would make a big employer do something like this. So here is where we have the changes in terms of what happened with the CDC. So these are the early estimates of updated 2023 to 2024 COVID vaccine effectiveness against symptomatic SARS-CoV-2 infection. It's important to note that this was in February 1st, 2024. So this may have been the document that caused them to actually think a little bit more in detail about what really was it that caused them to make these mandates and to put it in place. So they now have to try and answer that in a way that is feasible for them as a company. But it raises some questions. So when I then analyze this data from the CDC, you then had to realize what it is that they were probably seeing. So here is this data here again. And this time, what I'll, I'll do is I'll add to it the relevant tables that they had broken down. So here we have one important bit of information. This is the data that they used for recommendations. And so that you can understand the numbers, here we have all the tests. They looked across a number of national pharmacy testing locations. They saw about 9,222 um, tests that were provided. Of those tests, 64% were negative and 36% were positive. That's important. 36% positive. Now, they did make sure that they broke it down into the different characteristics. And so they then tried to separate it from the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, which again was quite useful to be able to see. And when you look at the details here, you can see that in the context of the self-reported number of COVID vaccine doses, in the unvaccinated cohort of them, you had about 730 or 22% who were actually positive. So this is the total number who thought that they had symptoms. 22% of them thought that they were positive. You compare that to the number of doses. So for people who had two doses and weren't updated, 
27% of the total number, or two doses, of which 31% was positive. So this is indicating that there is clearly an issue with regards to the ability of the vaccine to prevent infection. That's a very important point, because why else would you do a vaccine mandate in the workplace if it wasn't primarily to reduce the risk of infection spreading to other members of staff? That would be the only logical thing. It couldn't be about the fact that you're trying to protect people from severe disease, because if you mandated that, you'd also have to mandate things like stopping smoking, reducing alcohol, because it's an individual choice. That's where they were probably struggling with the science. So the science has caught up and they now have to try and make sense of it. But let's go a little bit further because there is some valuable information in this to consider. When we look in detail at this here, and this is now looking at the effectiveness of the vaccine among adults over 18 years. And they broke it down here. So this is purely among total here of 8,097. So this is purely among the vaccinated cohort. If they didn't have an updated dose, 37% of that cohort was positive. This is where they were recommending the dosage because they were finding that if they were updated, there was a lower risk of infection. But you are still looking at 29% in the if they had it 60 to 119 days and 22% 7 to 59 days. This is exactly the rate that was for the unvaccinated. So in reality, when we look at the vaccinated cohort, the inference would be that they seem to have a higher risk of infection. Now, that would make sense when you think about the fact that COVID is circulating in highly vaccinated regions. That would add up and make the point even more relevant. When you then break it down even further and you look at the cohort who is over 50, you can see here no updated dose. Um, they had a 42% of them actually were positive. If they had received an updated dose, 30% were positive. If it was 5 to 7 to, um, to 59 days earlier, 28% and 31 if it was 60 to 119 days. This whole area here shows very little difference in benefit in terms of the time frames. And they are still at a higher percentage than the unvaccinated cohort. This is a problem. And it's no surprise that when we think about it, employers now recognize that they have an issue. They fired people who are unvaccinated, and the science does explain why it is that natural immunity, which is very broad and it covers not just the, um, the spike protein, but looks at the envelope protein, the M protein, the nucleocapsid protein, is far more effective at a mucosal level to prevent infection and therefore transmission. This is what the science seems to be pointing out, and this is what the evidence is pointing to. And this is why it would seem that we're seeing ongoing circulation of SARS-CoV-2 in highly vaccinated regions. This is a problem, not just for governments, but for employers. How do they justify having fired these, these uh, staff members, many of whom have been long-serving candidates, how do they justify that legally? And are they now at risk for problems ahead? So when I reflected on it and I looked carefully because I tried to find the answer, I went back to looking at the Kaiser Permanente webpage and their workforce policy vaccine toolkit. I can't find anything here now. It seems they have taken it down, or maybe it's just a problem with my browser at the moment. But whichever way we take it, it does seem that they have changed their position. And I'm not surprised. Their challenge is, how can they change their position and not be liable legally 
for taking away someone's ability to work and provide for their family. That's going to be a challenge for many, many employers in the next few years. Remember, look in the description below for more of our links and click on the subscribe button. Have a great evening.